Morning, everybody. Looks Can like everybody was lined team? up, ready to come in. Good morning, everyone. I think we are connected with Facebook. We are live on Zoom. We're getting ready to go. Hi. Hope everyone's Good to see got something all. Good this morning. morning. Yes, of course, some of our folks might be joining us from someplace delightfully warm, right? But I imagine most of us are up here in the cold in Northern Michigan. Welcome, you guys. Those of you joining us here in Zoom, um, feel free to say hello via the chat. Um, again, this is a webinar. Some of you may be familiar with Zoom meetings. We're, we're here in our, our webinar, but we do like to hear from you. So please say hello via our chat. Um, you can contribute questions and comments throughout the conversation today through the chat and through the Q&A feature here in Zoom. If you're joining us on uh, Facebook, go ahead and ask questions and make comments there um, underneath that live video stream. Christy and I will keep an eye out and, and see what questions you have and feed them into the conversation as we're able, okay? And we're just gonna wait about another minute and let some of our registered attendees uh, join us here on Zoom before we get started. As always, I know that we'd prefer to be in person, but it is still nice to see your see your name showing up as attendees. And I'm of course thrilled to have uh, a big group of artists sitting in front of me. So it's a good Friday. Hi, Sherry. No, we can't see you because um, you're joining us as an attendee. Just our panelists today will be on video and mic, but you can still contribute to the conversation if you want to. Just go ahead and feed those questions into the chat and the Q&A. We're glad you're here. Now, our um, today's conversation is going to be surrounding our Guild Member Artist um, Exhibition, the annual Guild Member Salon Show. Um, so I imagine that some of our attendees here today, and I know they are, in fact, are some of our Guild Member Artists. And we're so glad that you're joining us here today. Unfortunately, with over 200 Guild Members, um, we couldn't invite everybody to be um, a panelist today. That conversation probably would not go too smoothly. So um, we did invite a handful of our artists who participated in the, um, it, the virtual exhibit this year. Um, and we'll just use that as a platform to talk about the range of work and the variety of art happening here in Northern Michigan. Um, but we absolutely love to hear from all of you. Um, feel free to share links um, and things like that in the chat for those who are in attendance as well. So we're definitely welcoming you and so glad you're here. Um, but that's the format for today. So it is 10.04, I'm gonna go ahead and get us rolling. We have a loose outline of what we wanna to cover today and I have a nice big panel um, here for our conversation. So first, what I wanna do is go ahead and just say a quick hello um, so that we can know who's joining me today. Um, I'm Liz Erlewine, Visual Arts Director here at Crooked Tree Arts Center. I am based in our Petoskey location. And as always, I have my trusty co-host, Christy here. Christy, you wanna say a hello? Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you. And then we have um, six artists joining us. And you guys, I'm just going to say your name. And then if you could unmute yourself and say a hello so that Zoom will automatically pop that video over to you and we can see you, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. So Linda Klenzar, can you say hello? Hello from Celine. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. And Colleen Schall. Hi, hello from Traverse City. And we have Mark Mahaffey. Hello, everyone from Empire, Michigan. Great. And Rich Foa. Hi, my pleasure to be here. From, I'm in Traverse City. Great. And Jay Peterson, can you say hello? Hi, hey, I'm from South Lilano. All right. And then we have Janet Ryan. Hi, good morning. Pleasure to be here from Cedar, Michigan. 
Great. Thanks, you guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. So um, you'll notice uh, in the chat here, we have a lot of artists piping in who are also our guild member artists. So just one more quick shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for your engagement with Crooked Tree um, and your involvement with the organization. So before we get into um, looking at the work by the individual artists who are joining us today and getting into some questions, I just wanted to introduce um, and talk a little bit about what our um, guild membership is and what this exhibit is. And of course, um, like everyone, we, uh, we here at Crooked Tree are figuring out how to navigate the restrictions and the challenges of this unique time because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and so our exhibit is virtual this year. So I will show you how to access that. We'll take a peek at it. Um, it's 160 pages of artwork, so we won't look through everything together today, um, but you will get to see how to access it. And, um, and we will share that with you now. So our guild membership is a unique membership level at Crooked Tree Arts Center. Crooked Tree Arts Center is a community center based in the arts. And we aim to inspire and enrich lives through the arts in a variety of ways. Um, we want to make art accessible through the making, through the appreciating, through the experiencing, and all kinds of arts with an S, right? Um, so we do that through our campuses here in Petoskey as well as Traverse City. One of the ways we are able to service our communities here in Northern Michigan is through our memberships. So we have a variety of membership levels that come with a variety of perks. So things like discount tuition um, and special access to different events and all sorts of things like that. Well, a couple of years ago, we developed a new membership level, thinking that it was necessary for us to, to develop a program that had some perks that would help service our um, professional artists and artists on that track in, in our communities. And so we developed the uh, Artist Guild membership. Um, so that's been about two years. Um, our goal in our first year was to have about 100 uh, Artist Guild members, and we ended up with just over 200, I think, or right around that 200 mark. So um, we were really thrilled to see that. And one of the perks and really important parts of, of this program for us is an annual exhibition called the Guild Member Salon Show. And this exhibition was designed to be an open door platform for all Guild member artists to participate in. Um, many exhibitions are curated um, where someone uh, chooses specifically what pieces are going into an exhibit and start a conversation around that. A lot of the exhibitions are juried um, where artists are able to submit work for consideration and then a juror selects what should be in the exhibit. Um, and so we wanted to do the Guild Member Salon Show as something uh, to complement that way of building exhibits. We wanted to create a space where artists could exhibit whatever they wanted to. And, um, and that's what we did. So it's a salon show. Um, I don't know, I don't have a link ready for this, but Christy, you might consider if you can find something while I'm rambling um, about uh, what a salon show is. So this harkens back um, through art history and, and and aesthetically, what we're considering is artwork that blankets the walls, floor to ceiling, because it's it's inclusive. Everybody can participate, right? That that's the concept behind the show. So so works are available for sale, or they could be things that you made a long time ago, or things that involve in a private collection, and all of that. Um, we have artists in our guild who um, are long-standing professionals who have their work um, across the U.S. and beyond. Um, we have guild member artists who maybe don't even think of themselves as artists, but regularly make time and space for their art, you know, every year. Um, so it's a real range um, and it's really exciting to bring all of those things together in one place and to really just celebrate what it means to, to make art and to engage in art and to share that art with others. So what I wanna do now is go ahead and share with you um, our virtual version of this exhibition. Um, I'm just gonna do a screen share here so you can take a peek and um, we will go ahead and um, feed that into the chat and maybe on Facebook, a link where you can look through that at your own pace. So bear with me as I click all my buttons to find where I want to go. Okay, here we go. And I know I talk a lot. So if you want me to slow down or if you want to ask a question, please go ahead and do so. So where we are right now is our Guild Member Salon Show online. 
And, um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I have a lot of different opinions about virtual art shows. I look at images like all day, every day, right? I, I love to look at art and I love to filter through them, whether it's digitally or in person. But um, I, we wanted here at Cricket Tree wanted to find a format that was a little bit more than just sliding through an Im a virtual image gallery online. Um, I, don't, I don't dislike that. We just wanted more. So we decided to go with this format um, that allowed us to embed other information and other links and really let you kind of experience um, the work of each individual artist. So, so it's in this um, book format and it's, it's called a flipping book. Um, and so it's a virtual book um, that you can flip through and find all the artists. And so we do have fewer artists participating this year, which sort of makes sense. It's a challenging year. Um, this virtual format's a little unknown. We had to make that choice, you know, at the end of last year. So we do have fewer artists, but, but, but we have a bunch. So if you look here, um, right when you open the book, you have um, a list of artists listed alphabetically by last name, and you can click on the artist and go to their page and find out um, more about each individual artist. So if we go here, um, each artist was invited to include two pieces in the exhibit. So you can see um, that, that piece, and then you can even go ahead and click on it and um, look at that piece. Um, and if it's available for purchase, you can, you can buy it. So let me go back here. Did you see that link? I, I'm sharing just one particular screen, so it might not be behaving. Christy, we catch did. me up something. Is we, yeah, we did see it. We did see it. Okay, later. super. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So you can flip through page to page and you will notice that as you do so, um, you're going to, we don't have the, the catalog laid out um, alphabetically. It, it's laid out aesthetically. And here's the time where I'm going to do a very important shout out to our colleague, Monica Stokes. Um, you in the guild know Monica now very well. Um, she facilitated, organized, did all the hard work of laying out this exhibit, um, and it's really phenomenal. So all of the information you sent there, sent her, all of the details, you know, she pieced that together into this book. So it's a, it's really great um, because unlike the um, floor to ceiling experience of looking at that work in person, which of course is delightful and phenomenal. Um, you wouldn't get in there and find out about our artists, but here we have an about. We found out um, little little tidbits of, of the challenges of this year and, and what sort of, you know, seems significant to our artists this year. Um, you can find out what other galleries our artists are in, um, and you can find out just more about each individual piece. So um, it's really been a phenomenal format. We're really delighted with it. Um, we've had wonderful feedback. So if you haven't had a chance to dig through this um, book, I absolutely encourage you to do so. Um, let us know what you think. Um, reach out to our artists. Let them know what, what you think about their work. Um, it's really something special for us to keep. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share there. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up a little bit. Um, what we want to do is hear from um, the artists who we have with us today. Um, Christy and I had the tough job of trying to figure out out of so many phenomenal artists to bring on board for this conversation today, uh, who we would invite. And so we've got um, artists who work in a variety of uh, mediums and have been working for various periods of time. And um, what, what we want to do now is just kick it over to you guys. I'm just going to run down that list. I have another um, image slideshow that, that I can share. And um, I want to uh, just give you a chance to let us know about you and your work. So actually, Rich, I think you're first in my list. So I, I will, as I'm rambling, I will prep you and prime you to, to head up first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show uh, an image slideshow now. It'll have your name and then uh, the images you shared with me. And then Rich, since you're going to start us off, it'd just be great to know a little bit about you. Uh, how did you get started? Um, what is it that you make? And you know, just five minutes. <laughs> Sorry. I know time is always so hard on these things. So. Well, <clears throat> let me start by saying that I, I'm, I'm really flattered to be invited to join the panel. I'm, I'm new to the area. Uh, my previous art home, if you will, has been in the Mid-Atlantic region around uh, Annapolis, Maryland and Washington, DC. And uh, I, I'm just thrilled uh, to be to, 
to find in Traverse City such a, a, an enormous and prolific uh, uh, art community. I, I've looked through the Guild uh, show from beginning to end and I'm, I'm really impressed and, and, and pleased to be among uh, such a talented group. Uh, I'm, my background is in medicine. I, I practiced for 36 years as a neurologist. Um, I took some breaks along the way in that career. And, and one of the things that I fell in love with while I was still practicing uh, were wooden boats, um, particularly traditional handmade wooden boats uh, that were uh, visible to me in, in small New England harbors. So when I, uh, when I finally retired, the first thing I did was uh, enroll for a year in wooden boat school. And I went out to the Pacific Northwest to a little uh, town called Port Hadlock near a, a bigger town called Port Townsend uh, and spent a year uh, learning the craft of, of wooden boat building. Uh, and, and I guess in the process of that, I learned, I, I, I realized two things. One, that I, that building a wooden boat uh, is, is one of those things uh, that isn't cut, isn't something that an old man does repeatedly. Uh, but, but also that I was fascinated by the, the, the concept of the wooden boat as art. And, and what I took from a wooden boat school, aside from the, the woodcrafting skills uh, that I learned uh, was a desire to, to, to take the, the skills that I had and apply them to my own personal uh, artistic concepts. Uh, I, I work in wood, I, I'm a wood turner and a lot of what I do is built around wood turning, although not everything. Uh, people often ask about artistic inspiration and uh, we're starting looking at, at a, a piece that has little or nothing to do with wood turning. Although if you look in the middle, there's a little uh, uh, a little uh, tube that, that's the one turned element in that. Uh, a, a lot of my inspiration comes from calls for shows. Uh, and I, if I see something that intrigues me just in the title of a show, uh, it'll, it'll get me thinking about what can I do that might address that, that title. And by virtue of the variety of calls for shows, uh, a, a lot of my work varies enormously from one uh, one appearance to another. There, I mean, there it's it's hard. I suppose if people say you have an artistic voice, uh, my artistic voice is that of a uh, of a of an adolescent that 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 whose voice breaks all the time. So the earlier piece that was just shown was uh, a response to a call that came from the Cato Institute in Washington D.C. Uh, and the title of the show was Freedom, Art as, the, Art as a Messenger. And, and there was at the time a tremendous discussion about walls uh, and the effectiveness of walls. And, and this is my, my take on the, the value of a wall. Uh, it's clearly a political piece. Uh, and, and, what it, and the title of this piece is Knowledge Breaks Down Walls. And, and what I have is a, a formulated a, a primitive wall uh, broken through by 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 books and and magazines by knowledge. Uh, uh, the little book in this in the beginning is uh, on liberty by Stuart Mill, um, and then there's a constitutional law book and a and a newspaper, and Plato's Republic, which you can't see. Uh, the next piece that uh, Liz or or Christy has shown is is something that I did in response to the pandemic this year. Uh, this was. Uh, my concept, if you will, a, a kind of a simply executed uh, turned sphere that I, uh, I, I turned into my, my version of, a, of the virus and my notion of, of, of what this virus has, has meant to all of us. Uh, uh, I do work with, with mixed media. One of the things that I like to do is incur incorporate carved figures, often antique carved figures that came from uh, the northern, northwest, northeastern corner of, of Italy, uh, a carving group uh, that's been going for probably a century called Henri. And, and that's an antique Henri toothpick holder that I've had wondering what to do. And I, I, decided, and I decided that this poor little fellow whose mouth is open and is screaming is emblematic of all of us uh, 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 in the past year. Uh, all he needed was an, a somewhat ineffective mask, and, uh, and, and there he is. This particular piece, by the way, is 
currently on view at uh, uh, the Circle uh, Art Center in Charlevoix. And uh, uh, <laughs> uh, here again, uh, this is a this is Medusa, uh, a, a, a reflection of uh, my love for mixed media. Uh, and if you, I'm going to turn my computer. Medusa perches is perched up above me in my study in my home. Uh, Medusa was was I was invited uh, several years ago to participate in a uh, in a show uh, at the Strathmore Art Center, which is again in the Washington D.C. area, which was on on books and and they needed some or children's books in particular they needed some uh, sculptural works that they could add to a lot of, of two-dimensional things that were hung on the walls and and it it occurred to me that 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 medusa or that a, a theme from mythology would be really good for the show but needless to say this was not suitable for a, a children's book show uh, it, it sort of grew on its own uh, these are auger bits uh, that I uh, have used to facilitate the, uh, or, or at least to represent the snakes of this uh, Gorgon's head. And it's, uh, it was a very challenging and, and fun piece to make, but not something that I, I shared with children. Uh, and uh, this is the, the, the piece that I, I did put into that show. It's easily recognizable. It's a tribute to Eric Carle, who wrote a wonderful children's book that everybody's read now for a few generations, called *The Hungry*, *The Very Hungry Caterpillar*. And this is uh, my depiction of Eric Carle's hungry caterpillar uh, after this was shown in in uh, at the art show. I donated it to the children's section of the public library in uh, in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, where the librarians now use it to introduce uh, uh, kids to books at their reading hour. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it gives me enormous pleasure that this continues to uh, attract little children when they come for reading hour at the library. So I, uh, I, my work wanders all over the place. Uh, and uh, it, the, what I look for other than the challenge, the technical challenge of, in making these things is something that sparks my imagination, uh, something uh, that perhaps offers commentary on what's going on in our world uh, and something that uh, brings a smile. Thanks, Rich. Um, I, I hope we get a chance to circle back to this. I'm gonna go ahead and move through to our next artist, um, but but I'm really taken by the sort of whimsy, you know, that, that you see throughout the work and, and even in contrast with what we have in the Guild Member Salon show. So I will just log that now and we'll see how time is. Thank Our you. next artist is, uh, and, and those of you in attendance, just feed your questions in, we'll add them as we're able. Um, just trying to be our, you know, the unfortunate job of timekeeper. So, okay, uh, Colleen, you are up next. Forgot I had to unmute. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Colleen. Um, so I'm an artist. I'm in Traverse City. I moved here about three years ago. Um, I've been painting since I was a little kid and I went to an arts high school in South Carolina and then I went to the Kansas City Art Institute for undergrad where I studied painting and art history and I did a double major there. And I did my MFA in Texas in Dallas at Southern Methodist University's Meadow School of Art. Um, which is a really great MFA program that I found out about um, kind of after looking at a lot of other programs because it's one of the only programs that you can do now where you get a full scholarship when you go teach there and they take a really like a small group of MFA students and if you're a younger artist now trying to go do an MFA it's really difficult to find a program that's affordable. <laughs> um, and a lot of my generation is just, you know, crippled with college debt. So that was a really big factor. So I went to Texas and did that and I had a really great experience. And then um, my husband and I are both artists and we kind of flip flopped. He did his MFA right before me at Rutgers. And then we went out to the West Coast and then we had kids out there. And in this piece, these are actually my kids um, ice skating on Lake Leland all last week. Um, I took them up there and was so inspired by the ice that I did these little oil sketches right when I got back. Um, but we left the West Coast to move up here because I grew up here um, 
when I was younger, I'm from Charlevoix, where my dad was a sailmaker, and I had such good memories. We decided to leave the West Coast because it's really difficult to have kids out there, and I wanted them to get to experience this four season life. So that's kind of actually started to inspire a lot of my paintings recently. Um, I think it's a combination of the memories for me, but also just like seeing them enjoy it. So um, this is a painting of Glen Lake that I just completed like two days ago and um, packed up for, it was a commission piece for collector and it just left the studio yesterday. So I sent a couple really fresh pieces. <laughs> These are both painted in the like last couple of days. Um, I'm kind of going through painting winter and summer back and forth simultaneously, I think to kind of get the, um, still adjusting having winter again. Um, so I feel like that's part of my coping mechanism to painting right now in my studio. Um, and then I also paint a lot of flowers. This is a big focus of mine. I'm really drawn to painting um, kind of abstracted forms, but I like to paint from life. I like to observe. Um, when I was an undergrad, I did a lot of observational painting. And then when I went to graduate school, I did a lot of abstract painting. And lately I've just been trying to combine like my love for both and find subjects where I can do that. So I paint a lot of my flowers on like a mirrored surface and I love to paint water. And when I was painting the ice the other day, I was like, oh, this is like the same idea here. And um, I like it when all of the colors and forms just break into these abstract kind of crystalline shapes. and. Um, I just love to play with the paint and the color as it kind of abstracts and reflects. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I want to say. I'm in um, my studio right now, which is actually a barn. We, when we came here, we bought this kind of old farm that we've been fixing up. So there's kind of this also combination, a lot of flowers I'm painting from the garden. And I want to expand on that this summer where I'm like painting a lot of um, things that are actually grown on our farm and kind of trying to think of this as this kind of whole experience of like coming here and painting the four seasons and really like painting the land that we're connecting to. Um, I don't know where I am on time if I should keep talking. Oh, that's perfect. That's a thing. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. Um, I also want to let you guys know that um, Colleen's work will be featured in an exhibit in our Trevor City Gallery here coming here this spring. Um, I'm not looking at my calendar, so I'm not remembering my open date. How terrible is that? Um, but the show is Passionate Reality. We have a number of artists who um, really will create a nice conversation together looking at exactly what Colleen's talking about of that um, the life around us and the, and the color and the shape and, and how we can move back and forth between those, those planes of existence. So, um, so we'll dig into that in a little bit. So thanks, Colleen. Thanks yeah, very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, oops, I have to, too many buttons to push. Okay, Mark, Mark, you are up. Go ahead and find your mute if you haven't. So I'm unmuted now, huh? This is dangerous. There you go. Dangerous giving me a <laughs> microphone, that's for sure. Um, geez, Mark Mahaffey, I live in Empire now. We've been here three years. It's absolutely wonderful. I can walk out the door of my, my house, and our side yard is part of the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. Um, and so long hikes in the woods are part of my daily life. My wife and Rosie and I have been coming to this area, I just thought about this, this close to 40 years now. Um, I spent an inordinate amount of time, uh, both in my studio and those of you that know me fishing. Um, so we've been coming up fishing the Platte and Betsy rivers and the lakes in this area for years and years and years. When we lived in the Lansing area, we and we were a lot younger, we would often uh, drive up fish all day and then drive back to Lansing in the same day. Um, I can't imagine that now because sometimes just the act of getting up and shoveling the inch and a half of lake effect snow every morning is enough to uh, have me take a nap. So uh, I'm sort of a compartmentalized artist. My um, uh, last 30 some years I spent to, as an art educator in Lansing Public Schools. So. Uh, sort of split between high school and middle school. I'm still warped from that experience. Had a lot of um, very, very nice uh, students. Um, had a lot of very tough students too. So I still teach. 
um, fairly often when I could be talked into it. Um, but I, uh, my uh, teaching has sort of um, uh, reduced in terms of its importance because uh, I like to get up and spend a lot of hours in the studio. So I'm compartmentalized. I enjoy painting in plain air because I am ultimately a woodsman. And so I like to get out into the woods. Uh, plain air painting is a, a large part of what I do once or twice a week, but not in these temperatures, a little too cold to paint out. My water freezes. Um, I have a compartment. So a plain air landscape based work and then I have personal abstraction and social political commentary work. Um, this is one of those. So like a lot of folks now, I'm really concerned with global warming, climate change, and what it's doing to our natural environment. So this is a whole series of work. Most of this work is new uh, based on the title um, Cataclysmic Change. Um, where the one species uh, going extinct or reduction in numbers precipitates the cataclysmic um, uh, extinction of another species and so on and so on. And ultimately, if we don't do something, it's going to include us. So that's the, the environmental statement with this current work. It is transparent watercolor, um, this work is. Uh, which includes leopard frogs. Um, and as a kid, I used to see leopard frogs everywhere. Now it's rare when I see a leopard frog. I did see one last year, I was um, ecstatic. Uh, so I included the leopard frog along with design-based abstraction, non-objective work. Um, it was a studio piece and difficult to marry the two images, um, but it's large. This is 26 by 40, 40 inches. Um, and uh, this is transparent watercolor. I grew up in that watercolor world um, and I don't call myself a watercolorist. Uh, I'm a painter that chooses to use watercolor um, often. So if we can go, is there another piece? I hope, yeah. So, um, you know, you often hear the advice as an artist, paint what you know. Um, and I've been fishing five years longer than I've been painting. So I picked up a fishing rod at the age of five and I picked up a paintbrush at the age of 10. Um, so I still fish about as often as I paint, which is the majority of my life. Um, and this piece again alludes to the fact that if we're not careful and we don't have good stewardship over our natural environment, we will lose it and in the process lose ourselves. So those of you that are fishermen know that these are walleye, um, quite tasty, <laughs> just as an aside. I do want to say right here that I, I have to thank uh, Monica Stokes. Uh, this is the second time she's been very helpful in getting me um, uh, situated uh, uh, technical wise. Um, so a little shout out to her. And Liz, uh, I've never met you, so it's very nice to meet you as well. Uh, and all of the other artists. Um, some of you, your work is familiar, and um, some I'm happy to meet for the first time. So I think there's another piece, or did I only send two for this? You, you just sent the two, but but tell me real quick, um, uh, is, the, is the one a print? Is that is that skeleton bone a print, or is that a painting? Oh, uh, no, that's a painting. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like a print, doesn't it? That um, it skeleton, does, of, yeah, that skeleton of a walleye took just as long to paint, actually lift from this liftable surface uh, as the rest of the painting took to paint. So the rest of the painting, maybe two, three, four hours, and then the skeleton alone, a couple of hours. Um, and all of it superimposed on a painting that was in progress. And I just felt that this married both the non-objective work that I do with um, some of the uh, social realism that I do. Thanks very much, Mark. Yeah, it's lots okay. of fun. It's nice to meet everybody. And thanks to everybody that's attending. Liz, it's nice to meet you <laughs> finally also. I know it is. It's great. I, I yeah. want to talk to you. I want to talk to all of you more about your work, but I'm going to keep moving on through just to make sure we have time for everybody. Okay, yeah, our I'm, next artist is is Jay. Let's see if I can find you, Jay. You're going to have to unmute yourself. 
There you go. Yeah, hi everybody. And thanks Liz for having this show. Um, yeah, I, I grew up in Michigan and, um, but spent most of my life and most of my professional career on the East Coast. Uh, I was a physicist for about 10 or 15 years. And then I went to Bell Labs and moved into software uh, and, and did that for the rest of my career. But most of the time we lived in New Jersey. Um, but 10, 15 years ago, my wife and I started thinking about retiring. She was also in high tech. She was a database analyst and a system engineer software <laughs> designer. And we were both sort of looking for things that were a little less technical. Uh, she ended up becoming a very good pastel artist. Uh, I was interested in photography. So, and, and it had enough technology in it that I was attracted to that too. She was happy to get rid of technology in her life as much as possible, but, but I have always liked it. So uh, digital photography in particular was what attracted me. So anyway, that's, uh, we've made that change um, and we moved here back to Michigan about five years or so ago, although we had been coming back to Mackinac Island because my parents lived there for a lot, a lot longer. But Traverse City is a great place for artists and, and uh, it has more stores and it's a little more civilized than Mackinac Island, especially in the winter. So anyway, this is right near where we ended up living, which is in South Lelanau, uh, this is Hoxie Road. Um, and this is sort of uh, one of the things that attracted us. There's just a lot of natural beauty, beauty around here and it's fun to find it and, and capture it and either in pastels as my wife does or in pictures like I do. So let's see what the next one is. Okay, this, this is a little more typical of what I like. Um, uh, I like buildings, I like man-made things, I like bridges. Uh, in, when we live in the East Coast, we live near New York, New York City. Um, and I did, never like to go there too much because it's an awful place to drive and it's you know crowded and everything. But when I started taking pictures, I realized it's a wonderful place to go. So I used to go there, uh, take the ferry over so I didn't have to drive and then just walk around the city all day taking pictures. Uh, there's not as much uh, building and, and bridges and stuff here in northern Michigan, but there are some interesting things. This is uh, the railroad bridge in Sault Ste. Marie. I took the, this this summer. Um, this bridge is interesting. It's right next to the, the International Friendship Bridge, whatever it's called there. But this bridge has been here since 1877, and it still works. Uh, it's a cantilever bridge that, uh, you know, trains can go back and forth across. I don't think it's used much uh, because it would get in the way of the boats, but I was just up there a couple of weeks ago and it was in operation because the ice has closed off the lake boat traffic and there are trains going across it. So it's still running after 140 years or whatever. So, so that, that impressed me. Next one. Yeah, this is, um, of course, the Mackinac Bridge, and I grew up looking at this bridge. We spent our first summer on Mackinac in 1958, the year that the bridge was built. So I've seen this bridge for my whole life, taken lots and lots of pictures of it. Uh, this is with a new lens I had taken. I said I still like technology, and I do. Uh, uh, but this is an 800 millimeter lens, which is the longest lens I've ever had. Um, and it's remarkable uh, what it can do. This is standing on the shore in Mackinac City, looking across to St. Ignace. Uh, and I took that this summer. And this, this lens is a little unusual. It's a fixed aperture lens for those of you who are photographers. Uh, so that made it cheaper and lighter. Uh, ordinarily, a, an 800 millimeter lens would cost many thousand dollars. This only costs one thousand dollars. Still not cheap, but uh, but still remarkable. Um, if you look at the left side of the bridge here, you can actually see a workman. You see where the it, the color of the uh, grids changed from green to red a little bit. Yeah, that, that's a guy suspended there painting. So. This is pretty remarkable to me that this kind of technology is now available for this price. Um, 
Okay, the next one. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Is I just it? put the, you said three of the five. So I picked three. So that's what it's we have fine. here right now. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Thanks very much. Sure. And our next, oh, I have to turn off, annotate what I get for trying new tools. Okay. Janet, you are up next. Hi. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, you know, I'm a silversmith and I also, also teach silversmithing. So very different from what we've been looking at, but this is my passion. I got started in jewelry construction with an extracurricular class in college. I went to a liberal arts school. I was a math and physics major, but there were a couple of girls teaching a class on jewelry in the basement of one of the dorms. And so I took that and I made some cool pieces, some of which are still around today. And, uh, you know, then I spent the next 26 years in Chicago and Milwaukee with a career in family and in technology. Um, but in 2004, I had some spare time and I took over three feet of space in my in the basement next to my husband's workbench. And I bought a jeweler's bench, some tools and some books and started taking classes. I had a girlfriend who was an amazing silversmith and she gave me a list of what to buy and some private lessons to get oriented to tools. And so there was a technical school in Milwaukee and I took classes there for years. So, um, you know, uh, the way I got to Michigan is I've been coming here my whole life. We ha always had a cottage um, on Lake Leelanau and I would spend summers here with my family. My grandfather was a fisherman and my grandmother played bridge and her girlfriends were buying land. And so we ended up with this cottage which we still have and uh, it's closed right now, but I tromp around there and look at the snow and the ice on Lake Leelanau. So uh, when we retired, it was my vote to move to Michigan. And so we found a house uh, up here near Sugarloaf Mountain in Cedar. And it's, that's been four years and it's been wonderful to be here. And it's fabulous to have an artist community here that's so important um, to, to me and to many of us. So what you're looking at here is a fine silver, uh, fused fine silver forged necklace. I've been one of my earlier pieces. I have made these for many people, sold them off my neck at various parties and um, it's, a, it's a fun piece. So um, what I do I really, do is, uh, oh yeah, and this, this, uh, this is a, um, called a Russian wedding ring. It's a sterling silver three ring linked band. It's something that's new that I've just started teaching. I have a couple classes this spring teaching that. So that's one of the things that I've been working on, uh, making sure that I have all the instructions down and can walk a group of six or so students through creating this in a day. Um, but, you know, where I work here in my studio, you see a little bit of is an extra bedroom in our house and it was the old master bedroom. So it has uh, a sink and I share this space with my two dogs and my cat mostly. And uh, it's a wonderful place. I spend a lot of time here uh, looking at my stones, thinking about things to do and um, and make and creating things. So I love beach stones and uh, spend a lot of time at the lake. Always since I was a child, my grandfather liked to go to Lake Michigan Beach after the rain and look for Petoskey stones. And I always look for the Leland Blue. So here is a piece with a trunk of Leland Blue pretty much a natural piece of Leland Blue. I have been doing some lapidary work and working with stones, but this particular one is a natural piece that came just up off the beach and had a nice flat bottom uh, for a sterling necklace. So here is another piece that is a 
beach stone, something I've been doing for a few years, uh, which is riveting with sterling silver tube and a, a small five millimeter faceted stone, uh, natural beach stone, you know, uh, hanging on a leather uh, necklace. And these have been very fun to do. I pick up stones. I spend most of the time walking on the beach looking down because that's where the stones are and uh, beach glass. And so I use that in my work as well as other natural things that I find pine cones. I cast those in sterling silver and try to incorporate natural things that are part of Lilama. So right now I'm taking a stone setting class from a jewelry school in Berkeley, California. It's a Zoom class, it's wonderful. And I've been doing that for maybe the last year since the virus, uh, thinking now is the time I have to spend on my education and playing with new things. So the I'm doing faceted stones, more of this kind of stuff with this faceted guy. And so you'll see more of that coming up in my work in the next year. So it takes me a while to incorporate something new into what I do. There's some math involved. There's some engineering involved. And there's rules the way silver and stones work that I play with. So it's wonderful. And I'm very happy to be here doing this now in this part of my life. Thank you, Janet. Okay, and then um, our final panelist is uh, Linda. Linda, can you share your work and let us know how you got started? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll go back in time just briefly. I was actually born in Petoskey um, and we lived in Conway for the first five years of my life while my father was in aviation running the Pelston Airport, which didn't look anything like it does now, trust me. And my uncle was at the Harbor Springs Airport. So um, then we moved south to Ypsilanti and I now live in Saline, Michigan, just south of Ann Arbor. Um, and I belong to a number of painting groups here, Ann Arbor Women Artists, which is now called the Huron River Art Collective. We changed our name because men are part of the group. Uh, also, I'm a Chelsea painter and a member of the Ann Arbor area Pastelis, and Pastelis is my prime interest. Um, to skip back up north, I have a place on Burt Lake, which we've had since 1979. My husband and I purchased that when my parents bought a little cottage that was part of a, of a a resort, tiny little resort with tiny little cabins. And so we go up there regularly. And so it was Candace Peterson, Jay's wife, who invited me to participate in a plein air group from Cross Village. And um, I, I was painting up there, but all by myself. And then after Candace's invitation, I became a part of the group, which is wonderful to have fellow artists and pastelists one, as wonderful as Candace, who was painting with me. <clears throat> so this piece is um, a, a dune that's on Riggsville Road uh, in Pelston, between Burt Lake and Pelston. And I've painted that scene in the summer and this one in the fall and a watercolor of that same area in the winter. And uh, so it's a favorite spot. I just pull my car off the side of the road and set up my easel there. So this one is a pastel as was my summer piece. Um, and the winter piece was a, a uh, watercolor, which I'm not showing the other ones, but I like to deal with lots of color. Um, this piece is actually at the Mathai Botanical Gardens in uh, Ann Arbor. And we, the plein air group that I belong to with the uh, Ann Arbor Women Artists, we start our season in March. So it was above freezing, but not much above freezing. So when you do plein air work, when it's that cold, 
you take about an hour or so to do a piece. And so I, I really, my passion is to do plein air work because I like the experience. I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and say that I, um, I always have been drawing ever since I can remember in elementary school and painting when I was in junior high and high school. And I was trying to figure out what I would study in college. I didn't wanna be an art teacher. I didn't think I would be just a full-time working artist and my mother, chose my career of 50 years, which was, I studied interior design at Michigan State University. And literally I just retired 50 and out, I say. And so um, in, in, in most of my work, which I'm not showing as much this time, uh, rather than only a landscape, I've decided there's a reason that most of my work has structure in it, and that's because I spent 50 years drawing structures, architectural drawings and detail drawings and that sort of thing. So um, I enjoy the landscape, but then this is a plein air piece that is in Cross Village, uh, a centennial farm where our past uh, plein air group was painting. And um, I've found that over the two decades that I have been painting and always lots of barns. I've, I've painted lots of barns. This one, this centennial barn is cared for and it is still standing. But um, as for preservation, I'm in the preservation of buildings and a lot of the barns that I have painted over the past are no longer standing. They have crumbled into the ground, which makes me very sad. Also, even urban scenes where the buildings are, are left. And so I paint a lot of structures. In my retirement now, right at the moment, I'm working on my website, my artist website. I had a website, but the person who developed it moved away and I guess it disappeared with him. And so I have, with Faso, I'm uh, showing all of my structures that I have painted over the years and those that I uh, have in the in the salon show are structures that I find up in the Burt Lake area. I spend a lot of time traveling through the back roads, dirt roads, looking for structures to paint. So I love doing that. Thank you. Thanks very thanks much, this, Linda. Thanks for this invitation to participate in this. I'm most honored with these lovely artists. Excellent. Well, as I should have been able to better anticipate, we only have a few minutes left to, to ask questions and, and talk amongst ourselves. So Christy, I um, with advancing slides, I haven't had a chance to really check through. Were there questions that I missed that we want to get back to? Um, there was one question asking if Janet works in miniature. If Janet works in miniature, mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. So <laughs> I think jewelry is small and uh, I don't know if anybody can see this necklace that I'm wearing. This is a pine cone. Hmm, maybe that's viewable. So as good as I think we're gonna get. <laughs> natural, I don't know if that's miniature. And Janet okay. is teaching this spring at Crooked Tree Traverse City. So um, be watching our website. That Russian wedding band is one of the uh, classes that she's, it's new. So stay tuned. We're doing a little plug here. Um, I did have a comment from somebody who uh, actually sent me a text. And, you know, uh, something that's been, I know the Liz and I have enjoyed, and I think other artists have, we have an artist guild meetup every other Thursday. And it's a great way to create a community, especially during this, this time that we find ourselves right now. So um, I do wanna give a little shout out for everybody who's been attending that and um, helping to foster that sense of community right, that's right now. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks. And if you're an artist in attendance who's kind of curious about those, but 
get a chance to, to join. Um, we send those email reminders. It's the same link every time. And we put it on our Facebook group as well. Um, I know it's always hard to get information out there. We're all inundated with so many things. So if you ever have any questions about that, just reach out to Christy and myself. Um, other questions? Uh, let's see, the flipping book. Uh, it was nice, the, the comment about the flipping book in that um, it's a nice opportunity to get to know more about the artist. And I think Liz brought that up in the very beginning. It's a, the flipping book is a positive to COVID because it does create this opportunity even amongst the um, artists in the in the guild to learn a little bit more of each other that they might not have had that opportunity just visually looking at the artwork on the wall. So um, we're, we're looking at the positives for our situation. So please feed any final questions in the chat there. As we do that, we've just got only a few minutes left. What I'd like to do is just open up to the panel and I guess raise your hand because there's so many of us just throw your hand up and I'll spotlight you if you have an answer. I guess what I'd like to know is um, what's coming down the pipeline. Um, do you have something coming up that, that artists, or excuse me, that attendees could um, keep an eye out for, see your work in person or anything like that? Does anybody have um, something they want to share? All right, Mark. Mark first, here we go. You can unmute yourself and I will spotlight you. Yeah, uh, big smile on my face. It's really not art related, but it is art related. Um, we got notified two days ago that our first vaccination shot is this afternoon. So my wife Rosie and I are um, positively giddy. Um, like everybody else during the pandemic, we've been um, isolated and um, not get, getting out like we normally do. And we're really looking forward to um, a slight modification in the our uh, lockdown procedures. So it's really not art related, but it is because I also look forward to um, uh, meeting everybody and um, painting out again with folks too, side by side, not six feet apart. <laughs> and, and maybe Absolutely. another workshop. Yeah, not to mention workshops. Occasionally I can get talked into teaching. Right, Christy? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, that's great news, Mark. Thanks. Linda, I see your hand. I'll come over there. Oh, I have to. All, all my facilitating Zooms, I've got to remember to press the right buttons. Okay, and you unmute. There you go. Um, I have a show ongoing right now if anybody's in the Ann Arbor area at a place called the Common Cup, and it has all of my structures, 23 watercolors and... and um, pastels. Thank you, Linda. I It's been so long since I've been down to Ann Arbor. I can't wait to, to get back there. How long will that be up? Uh, till the end of this month. It's been up since January. Thank you. Anyone else have anything they want to share? Rich, I'll come over to you. I'm unmuted. <laughs> you found it. Yep, there you go. I don't, I, right now I'm, I'm shopless, which is very frustrating for me. But what, as I contemplate getting back to making this spring, I'm personally interested in getting into art on a larger scale, maybe public art. Uh, and one project ha relates to a, a large antenna that's, uh, that's, currently perched against a house that we're rebuilding. This is about 60 feet tall. And if it can be successfully taken down, I want to repurpose it uh, into something. Um, so anybody who has experience with large scale work, uh, public works, um, and particularly people who have metal skills, I'm open to collaboration. I would love to see somebody uh, or have somebody come along and help me with uh, work on a large, on larger scale than, than what sort of interior display work. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, hopefully we can make some connections for you. Uh, Colleen, and we'll, we'll make sure to get to everybody. So I promise. So um, I'm going to spotlight Colleen. Are you back? Hey, you guys, I'm at home and I had a, I had a dog disaster. Okay. So okay. came to the door. Okay. I was Colleen. just going to say that um, I have some artwork now at Higher Art Gallery in downtown Traverse City, so myself can be seen in person there too. Um, and they just opened a beautiful new space on Front Street. Um, 
and she has some more artists there that weren't there before. So that's and great. It, I don't think it's too busy if people can still go in with their masks. So great. Thank you. Yeah. And just thank you for inviting me to do this. And we are still um, getting to know everything in the area too. So it's really nice to hear from everybody and see everybody. That's great. Thank Very you. Isolated on our farm. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Janet, I'll spotlight you. Yes, hi, I just wanted to say that uh, the Crooked Tree in Traverse City is having a show, the Spring Art Market, which is April 26th to May 8th. And I will have a table there of items. I also have my jewelry at the gallery in the Traverse City uh, Crooked Tree um, location, which is a lovely gallery. You should get there if you can. There's a beautiful collection of things. Thank you. And I know that Jay, um, he had his hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to mention probably most of, mostly for the uh, photographers in the area. One of the great things about Traverse City that I discovered when we moved here was the Traverse Area Camera Club. Mm -hmm. And I'm active in that, I'm in the board and we have a discussion group meeting that I run every month and a couple of other programs, but we're doing more stuff with Zoom these days, of course. So it's more accessible if you don't live in Traverse City, but wanted to get involved, you might look at the website. I think some of the meetings are open. Uh, we record some of our meetings and it's a good resource. There are about 100, 100 photographers in the club at this point and it's very active. Sorry for the awkward silence. Um, I am also at home and my dog had just jumped up and I thought for sure we were gonna be full on barking. So I quickly muted, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry guys, COVID life, okay. Um, Linda. I just wondered if Rich knows about the ship, the boat building uh, school up Cedarville. Jay can tell you more about that. Yeah, that, that boat building school up there is really, really amazing. It's only been there, I think, five or six years or so, but I've known some of the people who work there and they have some great programs. And of course, the wooden boat show, you must have heard of that. That's been going on for years and years, but uh, yeah, so it's worth a trip. Uh, Thank you, I'll, I'll look for it. I was not aware. Well, thanks so much, you guys. Did everybody get a chance to share? I think we did. My, my dog chaos threw me off. I, um, yeah, okay. Thank you so much, you guys, for, for joining us, for participating in the conversation today, for participating in the online exhibition and being flexible in that regard. Um, it's always so inspiring um, to hear individual paths um, and creative journeys. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to tell us a little bit about that. I know we couldn't dig too deep um, and share some of your work. And then also, um, I really have to uh, thank all of you and then all of our guild members. Um, obviously, we try to, to develop this membership um, with perks that, that are beneficial to you. Um, but at the end of the day, an art center membership is about supporting arts in your community. And it's about making sure that we are able to reach kids in the schools, to reach community members, to have open doors where people can come in and engage with art. And because of your commitment to us, um, we're able to do that. And so I just wanna say a big thank you um, to you and to all of our members as well. Okay, um, thanks guys. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. As always, reach out to Christy and I if you have any questions and we'll see you next time. Thank you.